in Stockholm, Sweden, and we're about to break it all down, including a great headline fight featuring Sweden's own Alexander Gustafsson. The crowd is already rocking. We're pumped for another great UFC card as well. Here's a look inside the Ericsson Globe Arena. Prelim action already underway. What a great day we have prepared for you. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back inside our Fox Studios in Los Angeles. I'm your host, Jay Glazer, joined by, as always, my man over here to the left. And we, we're trying to break him out of his shell. One child, some him, and sitting to his left as well. There's also middleweight contender, Mark Munoz. And guys, this show sold out in less than three hours. The fastest sellout for a European event in the history of the UFC. Without announcing a single fight, including the main event, guys. When, when in boxing history could you ever sell out 15,000 tickets, not announce that Muhammad Ali's on the card, who his dance partner was? Uh, <laughs> it's a major compliment to the entire industry. Yeah, when it comes to the sport of mixed martial arts and, the, and the, just the, the, the familiarity and the, just the excitement that the fans bring to the sport, right. it's amazing that, 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 that it can sell out right. in just a matter of hours. And the great thing here is it's, it's the brand. That's what everybody loves. It's the brand, great business model, obviously, by the UFC. Fight fans, we also want you to be a part of today's conversation with us on Twitter. Tweet your thoughts to us using the hashtag UFC on Fuel TV. Also follow us at Fuel TV. I'm at Jay Glazer. You're S at Sun and CH. You gotta change that. You, you can use your whole name, though. Know. Right, Mark, what's your Twitter handle? It's Mark underscore uh, Again, I imagine a lot of the tweets will be about a great main event. Light heavyweight fight between Alexander the Mauler Gustafson and Tiago Silva. Let's start off by looking at the tail of the tape. Gustafson is the second tallest fighter in the division. The one thing you don't see there on the tail of the tape is that Tiago Silva is a mean, mean SOB. Gustafson's only career loss was against Phil Davis. And what's he done since then? He said, you know what? I gotta go out there to America and train with Phil Davis. Yeah. Well, you know, Phil Davis is a wrestler, and that's where he gave him the real problems. He took him down, he was able to find a submission, locked it up on him. So, what, what would happen if you were Gus? He said, a lot of times you just avoid wrestlers and claim I have my wrestling fix. Just the opposite of this guy. He goes on, he takes Matt Hamill on, he goes on, he takes on Vladimir Matyshenko, he finishes them both in the first round. That's right, and that's what I admire about him. He goes out and he works, his, he works on his weaknesses, he makes up his strengths, and he goes out and he trains with Phil Davis. But, but, but not just Phil Davis, Mark, he went out and trained with you also. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, don't, hey. Don't be bashful here with us. He went out and trained with you as well. What impressed you the most about him when you worked with him? Uh, what I was the most impressed about was his, his, his transition between striking and wrestling. It was amazing. He hit a move that no one ever, ever has ever hit on me. And he hit a Metzger. What did he get you? A Metzger? Yeah, he hit a Metzger. Mental though. We're the same division. Mental though. <laughs> what else did he do? Anything else from there? No, I'm keeping my mouth shut for now. Here we go. That's good. Well, that's what I love about the sport also, that everybody, they share together. Hey, you beat me, can you help me out now? We've seen a lot of that with Randy Couture, the guy like Victor Belfort. Silva, again, we talked about just his mean, how, how nasty he is, Joe. And, and Mark, I'm going to start with you here. What do you love most about Silva in this fight? I just love how he's so aggressive, how he pushes forward, how he just loves a dog fight. He's going to do that with, with Gustafson. He's going to go forward, put him on the cage, make it dirty, dirty box him, hit him, in the, hit him in the body, hit him in the face, and that's exactly what he's going to do. You know, I would challenge anybody to tweet in and tell us right now their pick. Who in the UFC, in any division, is more enjoying of his job? Who likes what he does more than this guy? He loves to fight. You can see every time he inflicts pain, he smiles. He likes it. He enjoys it. And check out his bio here at Black Belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's his first fight. Uh, since January 1st, 2011, a long layoff, and we'll talk about that in a little while. But again, with this matchup, guys, you have, I think, a, a, a guy technically in Gustafson who we like a lot, but Silva kind of has that X factor. Oh, he most definitely does. He's a fighter. He's a fighter first and foremost. Now, I do like Gustafson, but I would like to point one thing out. Gustafson has this long reach, and I've heard both of you guys talk about the fact that Silva has to get in sight. Wrong. Gustafson has height. He actually doesn't have a big right. reach advantage. He's only got a 76 inch reach. Yeah, and you know, the thing is that Gustafson, he needs to keep him on the end of his punches. But at the same time, Silva, he's good at moving his head and pushing forward, and that's what he needs to do. Trying to try keep that against the cage. All right, guys, now I'm going to bring in the newest member of our broadcast team, a long-time MMA journalist, Karen 
Barbara. She is with us from Sweden. We're going to check out, check out uh, Karen throughout the show. We'll start off with her right now. Karen, how are you? 